Okay, so I core booted my T420 and well, I'm playing Tetris in the BIOS now. But let's get into how to core boot a T420 and what you actually need to core boot it. So I watched some of the disassembly footage, but I do have a T500 motherboard which kind of has a similar issue where you actually have to do a disassembly down to the motherboard to get at the SOIC chip. In the case of the T420, it's the SOIC 8, and this is the SOIC 16 chip. But I think it gets the message across. So the first thing you'll need is a T420. So I bought this one. It said it had a screen issue, but it turns out it was actually just a dead NVIDIA card. And you can compile core boot. Well, actually, typically the default one without the GFX blob will just use the Intel graphics chipset. So with that, I was able to revive a T420 I bought for $25. So also added an Ivy Bridge chip. What you'll need to core boot it is, well, a screwdriver. I think this is a number two size screwdriver bit. But anyways, and a flash programmer, which in this case, is, well, I stopped using my old RPI setup over there and started using one of these CH341As. I guess this one is a CH341A Pro. Don't know if that makes any difference, but it was only, I think about $5 on eBay and I got it from a US seller a while back. So let's uh, get into the actual build process, or in this case, the reassembly process. Okay, so the first thing I did was I tested it before I started the reassembly process just to make sure everything worked. Then I, well, started reassembling, and you do actually have to remove those VGA, uh, well, I guess, standoffs, but you can do that without pliers. It's a lot easier with pliers, though. Put an Ivy Bridge chip in it because even though T420s were Sandy Bridge, Ivy Bridge chips will run just fine, even quad cores. So, this one did have a dead NVIDIA chip, but I still put new thermal paste and then attached the heatsink again. So, on these, uh, when installing a, uh, well, any sort of CPU really, you probably should uh, well, crisscross your screws. So, this is actually going to be a little bit in taking time, but you don't want to crack a die or do something else. I would also suggest this for testing it, because even though you might not have to be as careful with thermal paste application in those cases, you do have to worry about one thing, which is that these chips without a heat sink will heat up extremely quickly. So you don't want to kill a chip on accident, especially if you're going to go for that quad core Ivy Bridge chip, which I didn't have, so it's just a normal i5 Ivy Bridge 3 something or another. So, after you got that reassembled, you can actually get down into putting the screen back on and everything like that, which is actually relatively simple on the T420. Also, if you have an NVIDIA model, that copper mount does require a little clip to keep it down. So. I would just go and reattach that clip, make sure everything's secure, and continue on with your build. So put the screen back on, test it, and as you can see I put a little bit of an OS on there just to make sure everything's working. And then I went to do attaching the speakers, and then eventually the plastic. And this was the end result. So. Disassembling a T420 isn't too difficult. It took about an hour for me to do it. So reassembly took a little bit longer, probably about two hours, maybe three, but I didn't have to use a service manual. So don't be worried about taking it apart. And I'm sure there's a lot of resources out there. Lenovo does actually provide service manuals and things like that for these models, as well as you can always look at, you know, like iFixit or something like that. So anyways, after reassembly and making it uh, look a little bit nice, I decided to put on my old theme 
of the kind of uh, Chicago 95, Windows 95 like OS and a MSATA hard drive as well as a 320 gigabyte hard drive which I mounted to a directory called storage because the MSATA drive is only 32 gigs. This is kind of on low battery so hopefully it'll start up right here and I won't have to clip this footage. So. Oh man, I got my password and username flipped. Let me just log on. It's kind of hard to type mirrored while looking at a camera. So, then once you're logged on, got my old theme going there. And I'm actually working on scripting this. Battery says 0%, but it, like I said, it's almost dead. So, let's actually get into, well, how to compile a core boot ROM. Okay, so the best resource for this is actually the core boot wiki. So essentially from there, if you're running a Debian system, they even have the line typed out for you, but you need a uh, git build essential gnat flex bison ncurses5 slash dev wget and glib 1g slash dev. So you just have to get clone core boot, go to the core boot directory, and then do a submodule update. So after that, you just need to make nconfig. And then you actually get into the fun part of specifying main boards, main board models, and things like the ROM chip size. So T420s, I've seen well, on this model is 8 megabytes. You can tell because typically you'd read the OEM firmware before you actually uh, get to compiling core boot. But um, once you're at compiling core boot, you are essentially just going to have to select Lenovo mainboard ROM chip size. And then you get to go down to things like your payload. I just used CBIOS even though you can use Grub and include a Grub config. I did that for one of my old X220 videos. But uh, I just went with CBIOS. It works fine. Uh, you can even add in general setup a uh, background image if you want, but I decided to skip that. And you can do cool things like ignore vendor program fuses that limit max DRAM frequency and ignore max dims for channel. And nowadays, um, under the ME slash TXE firmware, you can actually strip down the Intel ME through core boot, even though I've heard you can get a slightly better one with ME cleaner, or a slightly better uh, disabled ME, but this will actually work just fine if you're just worried about disabling the ME. And you do have to add a few things, like a GBE or Gigabit Ethernet config, descriptor, dot bin, and well, the Intel ME firmware. So let's uh, take a quick look around here for a second. But I think I covered everything for the most part, except uh, maybe the ability to add a CBIOS config file, which you can do. I haven't done it. Use CMOS for configuration values. I selected low default configuration values in the CMOS on each boot. Uh, and, you know, finally add a boot slash image. But, let's uh, get out of here and, oh, one last thing. It's important to run make disk clean before switching boards because we're going to get into compiling the tool chain. And that's what actually takes a long time. I did the compilation on a low voltage Core 2 Duo, and it was actually rather quick for compiling the board, but if you uh, scroll down a little bit, you can get to, well, the architectures for compiling. You always need a i386, so, or x86, but I'm just gonna take a quick scroll down this, uh, little tutorial section on the core boot wiki. So now we get down to make cross GCC and I just did it for i386 and I think for AMD64 but it's uh, relatively simple 
you just uh, you can do the entire tool chain if you want and but, but that does take a massive amount of time so you probably want to do that CPU option there and then just do it for the amount of threads on your system or the amount of cores so for util I didn't really you don't have to do that part but you can if you want if you just want to actually manually call it but I didn't really bother with that but in utilities though you definitely want to do this for IDF tool later and I'm probably gonna go on to a little quick tutorial of IDF tool in a second but let's uh, go into the build directory and show you where it actually outputs the core boot ROM. So it's just called core boot .rom. So if I search for that, that's your new compiled ROM for your T420 with core boot and the ME stripped. So I guess that pretty much covers it. Okay, so now that I'm mostly done with talking about core boot, we are going to go on to our final thing of talking about IFD tool. So you're going to want to use the OEM ROM to actually extract your blobs from. And then you pretty much, uh, if you need to install it, I think you just type in make or you might have to take, type in make IFD tool. And if you type IFD tool with the wrong commands, like such as uh, well, typically it's just slash x for extraction and then you're wrong, but if you mistype it, like, and don't include a second operand, it'll give you this nice help file, or you can just type in slash h. But, uh, after you do the extraction from your ROM, I'll, uh, show you what it actually outputs, even though you're probably only going to need three of these files for the most part when compiling on, well, when... I guess uh, compiling core boot for Intel boards, which is just Intel ME, GBE, and the descriptor. So that, and that's all shown by the flash regions. So I just copied those back into the default directory and then just shortened everything in the core boot configuration for file locations to just me.bin and things like that and compiled core boot installed it and I guess that's pretty much it so I hope you enjoyed the video uh, if I didn't mention it before the raffle is over it got shipped off um, yeah so uh, have a good one YouTube and hopefully this is a nice little summary on how to build core boot on a T420 and I hope you guys are having a good time or the best time you can have due to the current circumstances with the I guess Heineken uh, virus so uh, peace and good luck Hi.